take looking at gender from a scientific approach, right? For one second, we want to try to get away from our emotions, right? Uh, and kind of view it from a way that we can understand the differences between the human family. Uh, there's a variation in how people behave and, and feel, right? So to the best of your abilities, try to place your emotions Inside for a minute and try to look at things objectively when we discuss gender. Right? Uh, very sensitive topic for most and controversial at times, but we want to look at it from an academic approach. Right? So we say, in terms of gender, how would you go about defining gender? Now we understand that sex, by definition, has to do with assignment during birth based on your reproductive system. But how would you go about addressing gender? How would you define it? What does gender mean to you? What does gender mean to you? What about male? So we're saying over here, gender is very much tied into biological, which we say it's sex. We're saying oh, gender sex. overlap, but maybe you're saying that gender highly overlaps with biological sex, sign and birth. In what ways? Um, I might can't speak for try to understand is, hey, maybe this is a very personal experience, mm -hmm. right? But we want to see how these dynamics take shape to create this personal experience. So how you feel, perceive, think, learn, condition, things of that nature, right? <clears throat> but I think first thing that comes to mind is how we feel mm -hmm. about others, right? Relative to how we feel about ourselves. We're essentially are saying it should be Like, well, why do you feel that way? Like, well, for a host of reasons. I was raised that way. I'm religious. I'm blah, blah, blah. Right? Like, well, okay, those are very personal things. 
adapted to your personal life, your upbringing, but it may not be the same for the other eight human beings on Earth, how they internalize or express how they feel. Right? Who else? Who could uh, give me their personal definitions of gender? Yes? An expression of feminine and masculine traits. say one is an, it's an expression, right? You're expressing yourself um, based on whatever. You just say it's maybe something internal, right? We don't know what people feel or what people think. We can't, you know, I failed my mind reading class four times in a row. We can't read minds, but what we can say is people's expressions may dictate something other than quote unquote more. So you're saying it's an expression based off the rules of the last part? Masculine and, feminine. Masculine and feminine, right? So maybe we should kind of start there. We should say getting away from man, woman. Let's think of more of the dimensions of masculine and feminine. Right? It may have help us make more sense of the variations of how it can kind of cross, intersect, overlap, or close. Right, so we say, well, gender is, could be an expression, but we live in a society, right? We live within groups, we live in a society, human beings have a tendency to try to make things easy so there's meaning, right? Or we try to make things to be organized, or what we would describe order. We would say gender is predominantly constructed by social what is the order of the society, right? Where in our society, and in most, the majority rules, right? It's the majority rules, uh, which leaves a whole subset of individuals who may go against the majority or behave other than the majority um, to be categorized as something else, right? And treated as something else, right? Because their expressions of something other than the norm. Say, hey, we have a normal distribution in society. Everybody should follow these rules, act as if, right? Feel as if, believe as if, think as if. But, fortunately, we have human rights. We should be able to, you know, want to, right? Not that we have an issue. So say, hey, gender is somewhat ideological, right? It's created from a philosophy of historical nuances. So, hey, you know what, uh, maybe in some way men, quote unquote men, have dominated from being maybe potentially a stronger sex, right? And with that physical domination, men have forced, quote unquote, females or feminine to be a little bit more subservient, right, to the masculine. So maybe the masculine has dominated the feminine over time. And now it's translated to ideological sort of roles that human beings should play in various societies around the world. Uh, next thing, we say gender is perception, right? We say, hey, perception is oftentimes uh, different than reality. So maybe if, quote, unquote, if we're talking sex as some form of reality, one can perceive the real opposite of that sort of description, right? Partially perception. I perceive myself to be this way. I perceive myself to think this way, to feel this way. So let's we'll start there. All right, so sex in general, we say biological sex. Sex characteristics associated with being male or female. We're talking reproductive systems, ovaries, gonads, testes, et cetera, et cetera. Things to reproduce, copy of yourself of some sort, another human being. Right? And we define that as sex. Now we say, hey, you don't really have a choice with sex because sex is usually assigned at birth. Right? Once again, we say we live in a society, social order, Government says you are assigned a birth certificate as either male or female, sometimes intersex, right? And a little bit of both, which you have a little bit of female anatomy, maybe potentially some male anatomy. <coughs> and a little bit of both. Yeah. <coughs> Whereas we say gender identity. What is your identity of gender? We say something. 
psychological gender perception. Wow, interesting, right? So they say it's mental, and it's perceptive. Right? You say, I feel a different description other than what society has sort of defined as something. I feel other again. Now, even if it's psychological, it could be internal. So you could say, hey, I feel, but I don't express. You can get even more comfortable. You say, hey, I feel masculine, feminine in these areas of society, but not in these areas. I feel feminine when I'm in this situation, when I'm in this environment, when I'm in this group. Maybe I'm more masculine when it comes to this, when it comes to that, right? So we say there's a high degree of variability in the identity itself. But when we express, we say this is the way we outwardly express our gender identity as masculine and or feminine. Who can give me some examples of masculine expression? What's masculine expression? Yes. All right, so we say, hey, first thing comes to mind, and we say from a historical perspective, or ideological this, go to the gym. Right? Say that's masculine, but one may argue now in the modern context right now it's more, <coughs> more women get in shape as you know. Still way more men, right? So men still have a strong photo, right? Um, and so we're expressing that as a masculine trait for someone to work out. And maybe we say, hey, what kind of work We might even get a little bit more nuanced, right? Are we lifting heavy ways? Are we Roses, it, it, uh, all these sorts of things, right? What is a masculine expression that any one of you can think of? Oh, sorry, not masculine, feminine. What is Fingernails, painted nails, painted nails, right? All right, so we say painted nails could be described as a feminine expression. Uh, do we see something where maybe the trends are changing? Mm -hmm. In what way? Um, there's certain like rappers now who are painting uh, their nails to emo rappers <laughs> <laughs> to show that they're very content with their masculinity. Um, so they're able to do some of the things because they know that they're Right, so we say, hey, you know what? There's people who was opposing it to show that they have self-confidence and they could care less about what the general society is saying, right? So we say gender could be generalization. Right? We generalize a whole set of people that we are perceiving that they should fall under the categories of behavior or expression of what that may be. <clears throat> what are some other um, trends you can observe to say that are shifting the dynamics of masculine and feminine. What are some things that was the same? So we say, at this point in time, it may be, sh may be shifting to where it's seen as a positive for men to express more emotion, right? We say traditionally, traditionally men usually, uh, when they have issues such as anxiety, stress, depression, what have you, they tend to usually isolate, right? Isolation is key so that they very introspective, we usually don't partake in group communications to resolve issues. We say traditionally, women with normal we call individuals, best friends, moms, girlfriends, a group setting to sort of get group therapy, because men usually try to figure out solving problems on their own is uh, sort of uh, traditional behavior. Yes? What else that point to the like, something like
Yeah, absolutely. You have more choices on alternative. Now when we say, hey, we're still thinking about the scientific and psychological, the forces never stop. So if you were conditioned, quote unquote, in classical sense, in an awkward sense, Classical, you associate one thing to masculine, one behavior to men, another behavior to uh, women, depending on you know, your household or your race, mom did this, dad did that, these are the kind of conditioning. Right? Or you were giving reinforcements in your household, you say, hey, we um, either could punish you for acting like a girl, for playing with a dog, right? You get negative reinforcements, so maybe something taken away. Right, or you get something added by altering the behavior. We say these forces exist. And even when you're talking about gender, is there really a choice? I don't know, right? It's theoretical. Because now we say if there's shifts in how having more choice, are those influences also being opposed to make people more non-conforming, right? Moving away. Well, remember in psychology, we don't necessarily say learning too much. We say conditioning, right? Not sure if what you're learning, but we're pretty sure you're being conditioned to a new program, a mental program, to some degree. You did it as a child, you're conditioned. And as an adult, society may also be conditioned. The point is to say, hey, this is very dynamic. It shifts with time. What time in society are you talking about? Where are we talking about this? Right? Political systems, ideological systems. Uh, huge degree of variation. Right? Which means when it comes to things like gender, we do have to really open up our minds to let the individuals sort of discuss how we want to go. On the flip side, you said we do live in a society where we tend to uh, embrace and gravitate to a simplicity. We do like to have the definitions, right? So we feel sometimes when the lines are blurred too much, we're confused, right? We don't know how to even describe people. Do we do away with all the descriptors? Maybe that might be the better thing, right? Maybe the descriptors themselves are the enemy, right? Racially, right? Sex, gender, all of the above. Maybe you say, hey, you know what? The descriptors are bad. They're really there to divide the segment to categorize, and essentially divide and conquer, they can fight against each other, and hate each other, and stereotype and judge, right? And be prejudiced against one another based on the categorizations themselves, the classifications that we have. So we come back to psychology and say, hey, we categorize, we classify, uh, classify things. We've got these schemas, right? In our mind. We interpret this information in categories, but who's defining the category? We even think on race, we're like, how many races? I don't know, tell me what the sense is doing. Like, that's what we're going with? Like, yeah, that's what we're going with. Cool. Is there any real basis to it? There's no scientific basis. I don't know if I'm going to have a biological basis. Right? So we have to think of external factors constantly shifting. They change when we look at things like gender, right? Maybe we can agree on sex. We can agree on sex. All right, male, female, sexual reproductive organs, uh, they manifest into another human being. Right? So that's a real physical manifestation. But the social order are things that we can't question, right? How things are being done. All right, here we have the gender bred person. Right? The gender bred person is here to help us express and understand our identity. So here we're going to start with gender identity. So we say identity maybe starts in the brain, right? It starts in the brain and in terms of femininity. We say a degree of less womanness, more woman. Less manness, more man. Right? So we're still going back to not to kind of relating things to feminine and masculine. Right? And we say at what threshold does it become masculine? What threshold does it become feminine? At what threshold are a real, you're a real man? A real man would do that. But what point? Right? Say, hey, that's the pain language. 
very vague language, right? We're still trying to understand it. And that's not very woman-like of me, right? What way? To what degree? Alter something a little bit, will it be more? Right? So we say here with attraction, usually attraction is with the heart, right? Which means that our feelings usually cause attraction towards other people. A little bit more complicated, we think of pheromones, right? Chemical expressions outside the body that are basically hormones outside the body. <coughs> or we to judge attraction for others. What we say with sex, Biological sex it is maybe more femaleness, maleness based on what you were born, right? With the exception of maybe. Um, all right, gender identity formation. Gender identity as a biological process, typical prenatal differentiation. So we have 23 pairs of human chromosomes, 22 autosome pairs, and one sex chromosome pair, right? We say with chromosomal sex, XX. Chromosome is female, XY, and it's male. We have DSS genes on X chromosome, SOI genes, but sometimes these can overlap to produce intersex, which in essence is um, having reproductive, you would say physical reproductive or uh, manifestations that fit endogenous. Right? We look a little bit more. All right, so the basic biology, chromosomal sex for females, XX, which is gonadal ovaries. That would be a um, item for female, right? Hormonal sex, estrogen. So we say typically women have more estrogen than the male. So females that have more estrogen than the male. Uh, internal reproductive structures, clothing suits. In the, in the portions of the child, right? Whereas then we saw all this vast deference in the vesicles, the jacket, the duct, a little bit different external genitals, clitoris, vaginal lips, penis, scrotum. Sex differentiation of the brain. The hypothalamus becomes estrogen sensitive, influencing cyclic release of hormones. So we say, hey, there is some actual physical thing, biological processes that could form or lead to a likelihood of you expressing as a certain gender, right? One would be that you produce certain hormones, right? Hormones are big. We're talking estrogen. We're talking development of your body through puberty, right? Uh, here we're talking two hypothalamic areas of small in the female brain. The cerebral cortex and right hemisphere is thinner in the female brain. So there are different brain structures. The limbic system tends to be more dense in compactive neurons with uh, females, which means that on average, we expect females to be a little bit more emotional, emotionally expressive or even a mo more emotionally intelligent, right? You would say that females generally, on average, exceed males in emotional intelligence because they have the systems in place <coughs> to uh, really uh, activate emotional growth energies to understand All right, men, we say estrogen insensitive male hypothalamus. We have steady production of hormones, so men produce testosterone more than females. Um, cerebral cortex of right hemisphere is thicker in the male. Sometimes we attribute that to logic, right? Um, corpus callosum is thicker in the male brain, et cetera, et cetera. Now we'll come back to all these structures as we kind of look at all this prenatal. So we say prenatal development has a huge sort of factor based on mom's hormones and everything going on mom in terms of what the sex will be, right? Uh, as well as dad's genetics. Okay, so let's break this up for a little bit. Let's have a few discussion questions about gender, and then we'll come back more to the biology.